Alright lads, so welcome back to a, another Dauntless video. And today is the first day for the uh, Frost Escalation pre-release Dauntless Experimental package. I wasn't lucky enough to get an invitation, but my boy Lov Bud's single digit IQ allowed me to borrow his account and is letting me borrow his account for the next couple of days for me to get some footage. So thank you very much. I appreciate you and without you, I can't do these videos. So thank you. Um, but without further ado, this video is just going to cover my overall general thoughts on how this escalation is, um, how I think certain people are going to find it, and just in general what I just think of the whole escalation. Um, so first things first, in terms of aesthetics, oh my god, Dauntless Design Team, take a bow. Like honestly, it is so stunning. Out of every single escalation which they've cur which they've currently made, this is by far like by far the best. I, I thought blaze, blaze Escalation was really, really good, but then I saw this, like even the first zone, you can just see the detail in the mountains. It really does give it that um, icy, cold, uh, despair sort of feeling, and honestly, it is really, really nice. All the way up to the boss fight, it really does make you feel like you're stranded and out there trying to survive in the coldness. Like honestly, seriously, take a bow, design team, it is gorgeous. I also really, really like how they tried to implement a little bit of lore into this escalation and not just feel like you're fighting the behemoth through each level and that's the only thing you've got to do. They really did try and uh, tell a story within this escalation, like how there's a queen of the area and then the, how there's a legendary beast which is like roaming the caves and how you must go and slay it or else the whole area is doomed. It really, really is a nice touch, especially when you're walking through the last segment of the caves to fight the boss. And then you're finally, finally there after walking through this really, really nice tunnel and you are finally greeted by this behemoth like this. <laughs> the boss fight itself really does shine as well. It's not just, oh damn, I'm fighting the last behemoth. It is such a unique and dynamic fight, but also at the same time, it's so stunning. You, you feel like you're constantly on your toes because you're on that frostbite meter. If you do have that filled up, then you will fail the, the whole escalation. So it does feel like, damn, I need to kill this thing pretty quick or the whole thing is just doomed and all my efforts have, have just gone to waste. Like I already mentioned before, the fight is so unique to every single fight we've seen on Dauntless. I haven't had a fight with Mint which has been exactly the same and I've killed him roughly about 10 times and yes I've had fun every single time I fought him. Uh, I've killed him with Hammer, Strikers, Chain Blades and honestly there's only a couple of things I can make him 100% do. It just feels so unique. Yes, you can bait his interrupts like so. Yes, you can break his parts. Yes, he goes ether. But at the same time, it is honestly such a different experience when you're fighting him. It's actually phenomenal. But you must stay on your toes because, yes, there is still one hit mechanism to look out for within the fight. Don't take his size for a... <laughs> for a walk in the park. He can take a mean hit. He has quite a lot of HP despite being quite small When you do finally get his HP down to zero and solidify your first kill You are just greeted with this just stunning looking animation As I already touched on before, there's a new mechanism within the frost escalation and it is your frostbite meter and this is this determines how cold your slayer is and when this bar fills up you will fail the whole escalation, it does not matter what round you're on, round 1, 2, 3, 4 or even the boss fight. This bar is indicated, well located right next to your health, well your stamina bar in the top, right in the centre 
As you can see, there's like a little shield, a bar, and then the snowflake next to it. There is certain things to prevent this. I'm not going to go through every single option because that's not what this video is for. But the whole purpose is to make sure that you finish the escalation as fast as possible without letting your meter go too high and make your Slayer a freeze to death. As you can see right now, my frostbite meter is literally right near the top and I'm fighting for my life against the cold, but at the same time fighting the shroud. At this point, this was like my first or second escalation I was running. I didn't know how to prevent the, frost, uh, the frostbite and how you do so bestly is via the amp tree and the passives you unlock. The best one being insulated. Um, I'm not going to go over each and every single one in the amp tree, as I already mentioned, but regardless, there is certain things within the amp, tr amp tree you should be collecting to prevent this. Also, another new implementation to the game is these four stones. These are avatar stones. Each of these avatar stones allow you to be a particular slayer of choice, and each of these avatars gives you a different power. Sun, so being will allow you to prevent the frost bite to occur less frequently and it'll obviously allow you to get through the escalation a little bit easier. This is really really nice and it also means each and every single one of you if you are playing in a group of four, three or two will have to choose wisely because you can't choose the av avatars uh, more than once. So for an example, there is four of them, as I've already mentioned. One of them focuses on wound damage, one of them on shield regeneration, one on cunning damage, and the other one is staggerable attacks and interrupts. As I've already said, only one, one person, one slayer from your team can be one of these avatars at a time. So you can't have four people running, let's say the cunning avatar. So this, like I said, this is really, really nice because it's a really new mechanism and it will make you, you and your team think on how to tackle the escalation and not just, okay, I'm going to go for this build. Let's all run one high DPS damage build. No, that's not the case. If you are running in a group of four, one of you will probably have to run Pike because that's what one of the avatars really needs to be running. Also, one person has to be really good at booping and they'll probably take the staggerable one. Uh, if there's someone who plays a little bit more passive, they could probably run the shield avatar. And if there's someone who likes to do a lot of DPS, uh, there is a cunning one, as I've already mentioned. That's going to wrap up this video, guys. Hopefully you did like my introduction to Defrost Escalation. And I hope you guys have as much fun playing it as I have just the last couple of hours. I'm going to be playing it for the next couple of days while we're allowed to play this Dawnless Experimental. I'm now going to leave you with a my first clear, actually, of Mint, so enjoy that. Also, if you are new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. I would really appreciate it, and I will see you guys in the next video.
Tell this. 